The Insta360 Link is a tiny webcam that packs a punch. This one was sent to me for review by Insta360. Thank you so much. And honestly, they've been trying to send it to me for a while, but I thought it was a gimmick. I thought it was just a camera on a gimbal and I was proven wrong. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why. Now, there are two main things I want you to know before we begin. First off, the Insta360 Link is on discount right now. It's $45 off in the US and it'll be $30 off worldwide. So if you want to grab one after watching this video, there will be an affiliate link in my description. Second thing I need you to know is that I have a dedicated tech channel where I will be posting the full unboxing plus first impressions of this camera. There will also be tips and tricks on how to make it look the best with the lighting that you have. I will actually put clips from that video in this video. Just keep in mind that the other video was shot in 1080p and this is being shot in 4K. All right, let's unpack everything about this camera. So they sent me the Insta360 link and also a mini tripod that goes with it. In the camera box, you will find the camera, the USB-C to USB-C cable, but also a USB-C to USB-A adapter. There are four recognition markers. We'll talk about those a little bit later. There's a quick start guide and a warranty card. For the tripod, it comes in multiple pieces. You just assemble them like it was a GoPro accessory. There's a little locking mechanism. The adapter is a quarter inch screw and that locking mechanism keeps it really tight. So the tripod can be held as a monopod, a selfie stick. So the tripod slash monopod is telescopic, meaning that you can pull on this and it will become a little longer and then pull again and then pull again and then pull again. And this is uh, the size that you're actually going to get. Pretty decent. Of course, you can spread the legs in order to set it on a table. Absolutely useful. On the box that has all the cables, you will find a QR code that you can scan or just go to insta360.com slash link slash guide. There you will find the software as well as some tutorials if you want to. I didn't go through the tutorials. I like when things are intuitive. But to be completely fair, the software will also guide you and has some video demonstrations. Honestly, this is where I understood that it wasn't just a gimmick, that there was a bunch of options that the software would provide on top of the gimbal to make your life easier as a content creator. First of all, let's talk about controlling the gimbal. If you're using the preview screen, you can just click and drag on the screen to basically make the camera move wherever you want it to go. You also have manual control here by just clicking on those arrows. You can click and drag that center ball to also move the camera. Then you have one zoom option, which is not the only one. When it comes to the quality, real quick, you can see that even when you zoom in, you still preserve a lot of details. It is not immediately washed off as a digital zoom. You can also have preset positions. As you can see here, you just click here and then you set it in a position and it will go back to that position. Since we're still talking about the gimbal, there are some gestures that you can use to activate different modes. For example, right now, the camera is not tracking my face, but if I wanted to track my face, all I have to do is do this and then I see it blink and now it'll track my face. Of course, you'll see that you can change the speed. And if I wanted to stop tracking, I can do the same thing. I will see a blue light blinking and it indicates me that it's not tracking anymore. There's also zoom control, but my lights were interfering with it. So this is how you do it. You do an L and then you go up to zoom and then you can stop. You can also activate face tracking from here, of course, and the zoom will stay. And now if I want to go back, I can just pull down just like that. Staying in the movement category, when you go to more settings, you can see all of the gestures that you can do. This is also where you would control your tracking settings. For example, right now it's on slow. And you can see it's still pretty decent. But if I put it on fast, it is so reactive. The logo on the camera itself is actually a touchscreen button. And this option allows you to tap it once in order to activate the tracking. Tap now tracking. But of course, since we have the gestures, we don't really need any of that. And let's check out AI zoom. And that's basically presets for how much it should zoom in, depending on where you are. So while tracking, let's say that I just wanted to show my face. I can do this. All right. So now, even if I go back, we can even have a push pull type of effect, right? Oh. <laughs> And of course, if your half body is visible, you can click on half body. That is more if you're standing up doing presentations and stuff. That's not all for the movement, but let's check out other stuff. At the bottom in the middle here, you will see the face tracking mode. We've tried that. That's the famous palm thing. And then there's the whiteboard mode. And this is where we get like the four trackers. So if you do a peace sign as the gesture, it will look for those markers on a flat whiteboard. And what it will do is actually 
of course, look for it, but also flatten it. It will stretch the image in order to make it flat so that you can see what's on the whiteboard, no matter what angle it's really at. And this is one of the most impressive stuff that I see this software doing is it's not just a camera on a gimbal. It also really thinks about the application that you would have for a webcam that has to be that versatile, which brings us to the top down view mode. Basically, if you have a tripod where you can put the camera really directly on top of your desk and you want to show it, it will basically make sure that it's leveled, but even better. And that is my favorite favorite mode really is the desk view mode. Most likely you're going to have your webcam be on top of a monitor, meaning that it will not be directly on top of your desk. It will be, you know, a little further away on top of your monitor. And basically this will skew the image to make it look flat with me. Desk view mode. So it's going to point diagonally and then it's going to oh, and it's flat. Okay, that's it. I'm convinced. I am convinced this webcam is great. That, that's it. That's it. So it sits on your monitor and we're seeing like as if it was like a top down, perfect flat view. I'm guessing it stretches it to fit the perspective. And from the top down view, you can still click and drag to move the gimbal around to rotate it basically. So I did my best to try to show you just how much it's stretching it, but it's doing it so well that it's kind of difficult. You can only see that my fingers are a little longer than usual. So quickly from those options, there's also a streamer mode that enables basically vertical portrait mode type of capture. Smart adjustment will basically look for the best angle after finding a face. And then there's HDR that will basically manage a high dynamic range. I went on vacation and tested the webcam and I totally forgot about that option because webcams usually don't have HDR. So I had to personally lower my contrast to get the image that I got. It is high dynamic range, meaning that you will find more information, more colors in between the darkest spots and the brightest spots. Let me turn my lights back on. It is absolutely not a good example indoors. This is mostly something that you would use, for example, if you have the sun coming in and you still want to see what's outside while also exposing for what's inside. I mean, you can already see a lot of details in just how sharp this camera is, but let's turn off HDR because again, indoors, not necessarily the best thing. And now since this is a little dark, let's go back to our image settings. And I was also surprised here. We're going to get the ISO, basically the sensitivity of the sensor. You want to keep it as low as possible, but you have to blast a lot of light in order to keep it low. The problem is that if you boost it too much, meaning that you're making it bright, even though you don't have a lot of light, for example, you're going to generate a lot of noise, even though this webcam is handling it pretty well, but you can clearly see the noise basically everywhere, especially in the darker area. Now we have the shutter speed. Usually you want to double your frame rate. So if you're using this webcam, that is a 4K webcam, but it's a 4K 30 FPS. My heart. So if you want to stream at 4K, for example, you can have it as low as 1 60th and you get like decent motion blur because this affects the exposure, but also the motion blur. If you were at 60 FPS though, you would kind of want more, but if you're just live streaming or making YouTube video, it's not that huge of a deal. Then you have the exposure curve, which is great. I bumped up my highlights a little bit. Color balance, you can set it to automatic or set the Kelvins yourself. Then we have basic stuff like brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness. I have to say that the contrast when it gets low, you still retain so much. You have like some artifacts that webcam have when the contrast is too low, we get like weird color artifacts. You can see how my skin tone basically changed so much, but it is still impressive that even at zero contrast, it's maintaining that much detail, quite impressive stuff. And then we have the best option, save as preset. Any modification you do here will be saved. And every time you open the Insta360 link controller, it will be just as you left it. Some extra stuff that I love about this is the hotkey options. And it's that you can set up hotkeys for almost everything, even just moving the gimbal, zooming your preset positions, but also the different options, the tracking, the whiteboard, the overhead mode, and the desk view mode. Of course, that means that you have control over this with your keyboard, but also any other macro type device like stream decks and all that stuff. So one thing to note is that you have to keep the preview off while you're using it, for example, in OBS. This is why I have it like that, but I'm going to show you an option that I really love is to basically have a little dock and just like that, you can control everything from that small little dock, even your image settings, the different modes and everything. Once you're done, you can click on the square to go back. But since the dock will stay on top of everything, you will always have control on your Insta360 link. All right, there's two main things I want to show before I list the pros and cons. First one is the autofocus. When they say that they have a very fast autofocus, they are not lying. This is almost comparable to my Sony ZV-1 and it's pretty impressive on a webcam. It's not something that you see a lot. It's quite precise also, which is, Kind of cool. So if you're doing unboxing and things like that, 
You can even get really, really close. Pretty nice. The other thing I'm going to do is open up my windows, let the sun in and show you what the HDR might look like. So there you go. As you can see, the camera already has a pretty good dynamic range. This is like the sun is blasting inside my room. But with the settings that we already had and the lighting that I already had, um, we're not like completely blown out on the walls. But of course, this window is you know, completely white. <laughs> and behind me, we should see another completely white window. I'm gonna go ahead and activate uh, HDR. Now the HDR option does not support 4K or 50 or 60 FPS. So we'll have to lower the resolution and FPS. And there you go. That is one of the best examples that I can show you with what I have, but you can see details outside of the window. It's not just completely white anymore. And we are in HDR mode. I'm gonna turn it off and, uh, and you'll see the difference immediately. I should probably, uh, just be here just like that and then turn off HDR and immediately you can see the contrast is pushed We're losing a lot of um, information and of course the windows are completely blown out. So HDR is to be used There we go. We have a lower it seems like we have a lower contrast, but we just have a higher dynamic range So basically use HDR if you have too much of a contrast in lighting So the list of things that I really really like about this camera is not necessarily the face tracking itself, but the ability that it gives you. If I want to move and switch my background a little bit, I just have to physically move a little bit. I don't have to move my camera and that's amazing. I also love the zoom feature and the fact that if I wanted to edit my videos where I'm zooming in and zooming out, it's kind of great. Imagine if you're recording a podcast, for example, where you don't want to go in and edit every single clip, you have so much versatility. One of my most mind blowing features are all the top down, the desk view, especially having your webcam on your monitor and without moving it, have it show what's on your monitor and having it leveled because it skews the image to make it look flat. is just beyond imagination at this point. It's it is so good. It literally removes the need for a tripod, depending on the distance that you have your monitor at. Of course, the 4K, the quality being really good, the color management, the HDR is amazing. The autofocus being very fast. There's also manual focus. I didn't even go into that. <laughs> the keyboard shortcuts, the, the fact that you can manually move the gimbal with your mouse. And of course, it doesn't reset your presets every time you restart your computer. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the things that I don't like. This thing gets quite hot. There's a specific spot under the USB-C port that gets almost painfully hot. Let's say for some reason it's touching a cable or it's touching something else. It might damage it like it's it's kind of scary hot. But at the same time, this thing is so tiny compared to any other webcams that it's it's wild that they managed to fit like a 4K plus gimbals. There's two motors, I think, in there. There's no fans and there's no like aluminum parts, like there's no heat sink apparently. So that's a concern. It's not necessarily something that I don't like, but it's I'm careful with it. Another thing that I don't like is actually in the software. The fact that I have to click plus or minus to add one increment or click and drag is nice, but it would be cool to be able to just type in the values. I almost forgot that you can capture videos with audio straight from this app, including taking screenshots or just pictures basically with your camera, making it independent if you don't want to use anything else and you just want to quickly record something. But other than that, this thing is... <sighs> This thing is so smooth. <laughs> if you're a live streamer, for example, the idea of shortcuts and things like that means that, I don't know, with software like StreamerBot, you can have presets for positions that chat can activate, for example. So chat can probably move your camera for you. That could be like a channel point redemption thing. It opens the door to so many possibilities. But anyways, you can expect a comparison video soon, maybe not soon, eventually, we'll see. But this was the Insta360 link. Shout out to them for sending one to me. I absolutely love it. I believe this is mostly for, I would say more advanced content creators. I mean, if it's your very first webcam, it's an amazing webcam basically, but it's also a great upgrade, which is why I'm, I'm kind of like iffy saying that it's for, it's not really for, it doesn't feel like it's for beginners. If you're starting out, you know, start with a cheap webcam and blah, blah, blah. And if you're upgrading, this is the closest thing you're gonna get, I guess, uh, to a DSLR. And even then, most of the options that this thing have, DSLRs for a similar price are just not gonna have those options. So I'm really happy that we're getting in an era where some webcams are better options than DSLRs for people like us, live streamers and content creators. Anyways, that's it for me. Go out there, make me proud, get a level, out.